And these are the video A, B, C's. And they're easy like one, two, three. So tag along, it's gonna be fun. So this day is all about video ABCs. And the very raw basics. Yeah. We've been mostly talking about photography, right? Yeah. But today we're more focusing on the video side of the Olympus cameras and what it is to actually switch from still photography to video. Yeah, so uh, our background is actually, we were photographers, gone videographers mm. or cinematographers. So this is a subject that is actually uh, really important to us as well. So now that we're gonna start talking about video, we gotta first define what is video actually. Mm. Uh, so what is video, Jonas? Well, to me, video is a series of images. <laughs> it's to you and everyone else in the world. <laughs> yeah. I think it's the same for everyone. But yeah, video is a series of photos that is displayed in certain frame rate. Yeah, exactly. And now talking of that, let's talk frame rate. Now the important thing is for you to choose your frame rate according to your purpose. So why would you choose, for example, 24 frames per second? Well, if you want it to look natural or like some call it cinematic. Yeah. So basically think of this difference. When you look at your TV and you see a soap opera, that's usually at, you know, around 50 frames per second. Then you go to the movies and that will be shown at 23.976. Mm -hmm. There's more motion blur, there's less data, and there's actually more things hidden mm -hmm. than shown. Yeah. But a great example to use higher frame rates, like 40 or 50 frames per second, is so that people can follow, for example, sports. Mm -hmm. So you want to be able to see the detail of what's actually happening. What's happening with the yeah, ball? Or to be able to follow, follow the actual game. Yeah. yeah. Usually when you're taking photos, you want the shutter speed to be fairly fast so that nothing is blurry, right? Yeah. And it's okay for photography, but for video, it's quite the opposite. Yeah. Traditionally, when you go to the movies, you're used to seeing things at around 24 frames per second and at a, what we call a 180 degree shutter, mm. which is basically that it is double the frame rate. So if it's 24 frames per second, the shutter sp speed will be 148th. Yeah. If it's gonna be 25, it's gonna be 150th. Yeah. If it's gonna be 100 frames per second, then it's gonna be 200. And that's kind of like the classic recipe for motion blur. Mm. Now, why do we actually want motion blur in video? Now here is an example where the shutter speed is twice the frame rate, so you can see the motion blur is fairly nice to the eye. And then again, here is an example that is filmed on one two hundredth of a second shutter speed. And here you can see the, the motion is not so pleasing to the eye anymore. Yeah, it becomes kind of stuttery and choppy. You can use a higher shutter speed for an effect. Say a movie like Saving Private Ryan, they mm. actually shot it at a lesser frame rate and higher shutter speeds mm. to be able to get that choppy action feel. Yeah. But most of the time, if you want it to look pleasing to the eye, easy to see, uh, you kind of want a bit of that motion blur. Mm. What's also important when you're deciding what to film is deciding on your recording format. Yeah, so what we're talking about recording format, we talk about the resolution and the codec. Mm -hmm. Now, if those two words mean absolutely nothing to you, that's okay. Because we're gonna get you sorry right out. Let's talk resolution first. Most people in the world are gonna see their videos online. Mm -hmm. And that codec, depending on how fast their broadband is, yep. it's gonna be between 360p to 1080p. Yeah. Now, cameras love to say like, oh, we're shooting 4K, 8K, 12K, raw, 10-bit, 12-bit, all that. Yeah. But most people are never gonna see it at that resolution. No way, because they're looking at it through a phone. Yeah, so what are you actually gonna be using your videos for is something you wanna think about. Yeah. If you're just gonna be doing you know, holiday videos, uh, home videos, things like that, you know, 1080p is gonna be fine. However, 4K has its purpose as well. Yeah, of course, yeah. If you want to, for example, crop the image. Yeah. See yeah. that? See that? We're cropping in. Woo. So if the lens that you were using wasn't the perfect for the shot, you can crop in like two times. Yeah, basically two times and still have a 1080 yeah. image. If, if the end result is 
it's gonna be 1080 video, so it's gonna be perfectly fine. Yeah. Now the Olympus camera has a few different codecs and a few different uh, recording formats. So we're just gonna quickly talk about those. Uh, it has its basic 1080p, 25, 30, 60 frames, mm -hmm. 50 frames per second mm. filming. Jumping from HD to 4K, mm -hmm. you, we get what? 30 frames per second? Yeah, 30 frames. 30 frames. And some of these cameras, like the EM5 Mark III, they can shoot 120 frames per second in full HD. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of choice there. But Olympus has one format that is most interesting to me. It is called the Cinema 4K. Mm. Now, what is different about this, uh, it is a 17 by 9. Yeah. So it's a bit wider format. And it is a super, super hardcore codec. It's yeah. like 237 megabytes per mm. second. And even most of your cards won't be able to handle that. Yeah. So please bear in mind, if you're going to be trying to shoot those super high quality, great Cinema 4K uh, codecs, you need a fast card. Yeah, so check that the, your card is good for this Cinema 4K. Yeah. Now, when do you use Cinema 4K? Well, you want to use Cinema 4K if, for example, you want to grade the image. Yeah. So if you are changing the colors, tweaking the exposure, uh, you want to have more bit rates. Yeah, so. but what is bit rate? <laughs> yeah, no well, bit rate. In its essence, when you're looking at a codec, the higher the megabytes per second is labeled, the more data they will be available for color and light and shadow. Mm. So the more of what you're actually filming can be fit into the actual file. Mm. Now people often think that bigger is better, right? Yeah, well, it's not the case every time because you need to think about where you're actually using the video. So bear in mind that if you are shooting always the highest bitrate possible, you're also gonna need to invest in some hard disks because... And cards. Yeah. yeah. Because space is actually uh, one thing you need to consider. Yeah. Now, since we've been talking about Cinema 4K, let's talk about one last feature of the Olympus cameras, and that is the color profiles. Mm. So what do we have in the Olympus? Well, Olympus cameras, they have a flat color profile. That's what you want to use if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> but they also have this called OM Log. 400. Yeah. Now, what an analog image is, it is basically trying to squeeze as much highlight and shadow and color data into the codec as possible. Mm -hmm. That means that when we're filming with a flat, it's going to look like this. Super nice. You know, it's kind of ready to use. You, you might want to do some color tweaking or some contrast, but it's like out of the box. Mm -hmm. Now, when we switch to analog 400, it turns into this crazy flat thing. Yeah. Now, out of the box, yeah, it, it looks ugly. It looks ugly, honestly. <laughs> but once you grade it like this, it's super nice and you can do so many things. You could do this, you can do this, and you can do this because there's just so much more data there. Mm. Now, enough about the colors. Uh, let's focus on something different. Ooh, I see what you did there. I mean, we should focus on focus. Exactly. Yeah. Every camera manufacturer, they want to boast about their autofocus and they're pretty good nowadays. Yeah. But do you always want to use autofocus? Now, that, that is an important question. Yeah. Now, I, as a filmmaker, actually like to have control and have the decision power over where I want to focus because it's a storytelling mechanism. That means that if I am focusing on something in the foreground like this, what is in the background will be blurry. And then when I pull that focus to the background, I'm revealing another part of the story. Mm. Now, you can also do this, of course, with the autofocus because you can use the Olympus cameras to touch screen. You can actually move the focus point from the foreground to the background. And also in some models, you can change the focusing speed. Yeah, which is really handy because then you can change it to make it feel less robotic and more yeah. natural and slow like a human being would do it. Yeah. Now, the most common mode of autofocus that you're going to be using is continuous autofocus. Now, what continuous autofocus does, it basically focuses on whatever the focus points are pointed at. Mm -hmm. Now, the first tip is with focus is that you want to choose the size of your focus area. If your focus area is super large, it's basically going to pick anything that comes, that comes closer, like my hands here. But then if it is kind of more pointed, you can actually pick between points in the area where you want to focus. You can 
ramp up your continuous autofocus by introducing the tracking method. Yeah. So you enable it by when you start to record, you use the, the touch screen, point it to a subject that you want the camera to track. It can be a car, a horse, whatever. Yeah. And the good thing is that it will try to follow that subject throughout the frame. Even if your subject goes out of the frame and comes back in a few seconds, it's going to pick the right subject again. So it's like, it has a memory. Yeah, it has a memory. Another form of uh, tracking is face detection. It is super smart. It is super easy with people. Uh, so if you're filming people, I would highly suggest using this. Mm. Now Olympus cameras, they have an internal image stabilization built in. Yeah, depending on camera model, model it can be between three and five axis, I think. Mm. Uh, most of them will be five axis, especially in the higher end, starting from kind of like the EM10s. Yeah. What that means is even the pure lens wouldn't have any image stabilization. Your, the body has, so it's helping a lot if you're doing video. But if you pair it up with a lens that also has a image stabilization, you get what Olympus Sync IS. Yes, which is some engineer. Mm. Magic. <laughs> now, what do you need stabilization for? Well, here's an example. Say that we are outside with Jonas, I'm trying to film him, and my hands are shaking because of my lack of caffeine. Uh, well, this is what it's going to look like. Now, flipping on the image stabilization becomes a whole different ball game. Everything is nice and smooth, serene, all is peaceful and nice in the world. Yeah. Now, personally, what I think is the best image stabilization in the market is inside this camera. Mm. This is the only stabilization system that I feel like is actually helping me move the camera. Mm. Uh, you mm. can do, you know, pans, jeeps, cranes, dolly ins, dolly outs, whips. And it keeps going and it, and it keeps helping you out with that. Mm -hmm. Now, but, but a good point, do you always want to use stabilization? Yeah, because in the previous episode when we were de doing the Liam Neeson fighting ski, yeah. <laughs> you switched off the IS, right? I did. I did because I actually want that camera shake. You know, I wanted to do, have a, like a handheld action film feel, mm. things to feel like shaky and uh, unpredictable. Yeah switch that thing off and you have that, still have that available. Yeah. So, you know, the stabilization gives you possibilities. Uh, in the higher end models like the EM1 Mark III and the EM1X, you can actually fine tune the stabilization. So what you can do is you can change how much it reacts to your movements and how much it stabilizes. Mm. So you can kind of have this semi-handheld feel or you can have this fully locked out, like I'm not moving anywhere thing, <laughs> yeah. uh, which is super cool. So you have choice and the ability to choose what you, what you want to use it for. Mm -hmm. In conclusion, when you're filming first, number one, choose your frame rate and your shutter speed according to your work. So pick the right tools for the job. Exactly. And that also accounts for resolution. Mm -hmm. You don't want to overshoot. So pick the kind of format that you can actually edit, that you can actually use. And then number three, use the focus that is best for the job. So is it auto focus? Is it manual focus? Is it tracking? You also want to pick the right stabilization uh, and use the stabilization to your advantage. Uh, if you're hand holding the camera and you want that handheld feel, make it feel like you're in the room, switch it off. If you want it, that smooth, steady cam kind of thing where you're able to get this fluid movement, keep it on. And you can even choose between IS-1 or IS-2, depending on how heavy you want that stabilization to be. Mm. Now, we're just scratching the surface here because video is a world so vast and worth exploring that we could spend mm. hundreds of days talking about the subject. Yeah, that's why this is only the ABC. Uh, if you want more information, you know, there's so much good stuff available, both on the Olympus pages and the interwebs worldwide. Just dive in, try things out, uh, but get started with this and let us know what you think. Mm -hmm. And on that note, it's time to say goodbye. As always, bye-bye. So, bye-bye.